Okay, uh, I will talk about the assimilation of the power LiDAR data using a uh, cloud resolving 4D bar assimilation system on a meso gamma scale convective system. So, what is the meso gamma convective system? Are uh, this? This is a cumulonimbus, and this is part of thunderstorm. I will show the radar echo here. So you can see the radar echoes of this cumulonimbus. It's horizontal size about five kilometers, and the life, lifetime is about one hour from the beginning to the end. And next one is this one. You can see it's high intense rainfall distribution in this circle. The horizontal resolution of this system is about 20 kilometers. And its horizontal, no, lifetime is about two hours. So these phenomena, has, as you see, the speci small spatial scale of around 10 kilometers, and also the large variation in time, about two hours from the beginning to the end. So we can easily understand we have difficulty to predict such phenomena. And also, even observing the system is difficult. So Martin Weizmann asked a question, what observation do we need for convective scale data simulation? I will show one of the answers to this question through the of the observation system experiment, not the statistical result. So here we have the cumulonimbus lifetime. At the beginning, there is a small cumulonimbus. This is formed with rich water vapor and uh, wind convergence in the low troposphere. And this quickly developed within a 10 to 20 or 30 minutes, and the eventually its horizontal size is to the 10 kilometers. To observe this, we have a weather radar here. This observation provides us uh, rainwater uh, information and uh, wind field information inside this cloud. If we have uh, small insects, in the clear air sky, we can get wind field observations surrounding the observation, this cumulonimbus. So, and also we have GNSS satellite systems. In Japan, we have very dense GNSS observation network at uh, 15 kilometers resolution. Using this system, we get uh, water vapor field in the atmosphere. So, and also we have LiDAR system. This LiDAR system observes wind field and water vapor field in the low troposphere. And uh, we have a new generation geostationary satellite, HIMARS-8. This satellite provides uh, cloud information as well as wind motion vector in a very short time interval, so five minutes or one minute or less. So for successful prediction of human inverse, it is necessary to observe environmental fields, water vapor, wind, and temperature surrounding human inverse, as well as water substances inside human inverse, using remote sensing networks with high density in time and space. So for predicting cumulonimbus, we need a uh, no hydrostatic model to predict cumulonimbus explicitly. And also, we have a connection between the model and the observation. This is the advanced data simulation system, but at storm scales, less than two kilometers, in my opinion. So we have been developing the no hydrostatic 4D bar since 2002, this is called NHN 4D bar. 
So this system consists of uh, two parts. One is the forward model. This is the GMA mesoscale no hydrostatic model with full physics, including three R squared microphysics and radiation, turbulence, and so on. And its adjoint model is limited to the dynamic core and warm lane microphysical process. So using this adjoint system, we can assimilate a lot of remote sensing data like radio velocity, reflectivity, and uh, polarimetric radars. And also, we get uh, GNS derived water vapor field, like integrated water vapor and swamp total delay, and zenith total delays. In this talk, I will introduce the assimilation of Doppler wind LiDAR data. Its horizontal scale uh, resolution is two kilometers at the moment, but we are trying to enhance this up to 0.5 kilometer. But this is out of scope, my talk. So here we have the NICT Doppler LiDAR instrument. Doppler LiDAR is a laser instrument like this. A laser beam from here to here and reflect something. This is uh, actually an air source or a large ED in the atmosphere. So we can get the Doppler shift of laser beam and we get the radio wind velocity. So the horizontal resolution of this instrument about azimuth resolution is about two, two degrees and it's quite high resolution is about 76 meters in radial direction. But there is a weakness of this instrument. It's narrow observational range of from 10 to 20 kilometers. So this is the example of Doppler LiDAR uh, radial winds. You can see the wind direction from here to here. This is a Cuban nimbus. And then this cloud system is crossing to the observation site. The wind speed strengths and, and also the direction the wind change to this direction and this. After this cloud system passed away from the observation site, we get the general direction of the wind field. Using this data, we conducted a simulation experiment. We set the 30 minutes simulation window here and simulated uh, GNSS integrated water vapor every five minutes and uh, reflectivity and uh, the probability by weather radars every one minute. This exp and in addition to this observation, I assimilated the Doppler velocity by Doppler LiDAR system every one minute. First three observations were assimilated in control experiment. In addition to this, I assimilated four uh, Doppler LiDAR observations as LDR case. Here we have the one hour accumulated rainfall distribution. This is the, from this time to this. This is the forecast time. You can see two convective areas of A and B. This is observation. And if we have no data simulation, there are no convective systems in this area. When we assimilate GNSS and uh, weather radar data, we get two convective areas at the same regions. But their intensity is very weaker compared with the observations. In addition to these two observations, I assimilated uh, with LiDAR data, we get the intense rainfall region in the same place. So we can conclude it 
the assimilation of LiDAR data enhance the length of intensity. So how does this work is the next question. So this is a difference between difference of wind vector between the control and the LDR case. So the, this is the observational range. You can see the large differences surrounding the observational area. And first we have uh, wind direction of inflow field in control this this way. And the assimilation of Doppler LiDAR change to this direction. This is the first effect of the assimilation of Doppler LiDAR. This change gives us the motor vapor, change of motor vapor flux. This is Kimber Nimbus and uh, this is uh, large increment of water vapor flux. Yeah, as you see, the, we get uh, rich water vapor flux inflow area to this Cuba Nimbus. This is also gives us uh, rich water vapor field here. This is no data case. This is the assimilation of LDR case. We have the more than 60 millimeter of precipitable water vapor uh, in the convective, strong convection area here. So we understood the, how the LiDAR data works to the impact of red, uh, heavy rainfall assimilation. So we'd like to know the each observation impact of radar, LiDAR, and GNSS. This is the all data simulation case, minus no data, and we get the impact. So we can see it's large impact of rainfall distribution after the all, all three observational instruments. So this is. As, as we know, Doppler LiDAR has a huge impact on this results. So first we see the single observation experiment result. So this is a uh, single observation of Doppler wind LiDAR impact. A very few <laughs> impact on this. How about other observation? Weather radar, small impact also. GNSS derived water vapor, very few limited observation, uh, limited impact on heavy rainfall forecast. Single observation has a very limited impact on convective scale DA. How about combinations of each observation? Here we have combination of weather, Doppler LiDAR here. Also we have very limited impact. Another one, GNSS and LiDAR, no significant impact from this, this case. So only the old data estimation was successful for the mesogamma convective scale rainfall forecast. So we can answer to the question, what observation do we need for convective scale data estimation? Let's say we need everything. <laughs> <laughs> Every observation of this is the simulation of the Cuban Nimbus. We need humid airflow, water vapor field by GNSS, and uh, strong wind in the troposphere. We need wind field seamlessly connected inside and outside of. Cumulative Nimbus derived by radar and LiDAR. And also we need water substances inside the Cumulative Nimbus here. So after all of assimilation, we get the this simulation after one hour forecast. So thank you for your attention. <laughs> <laughs>